Just do this for two days and see, you will become something truly fantastic within yourself, just this is all. If you learn to simply sit, you'll become tremendously intense. Right now, your energy is simply expanded by doing unnecessary, endless activity. When you have so much mental diarrhea, how can you have energy? Suppose you have diarrhea, do you see how weak you feel? Yes or no? Right now this mental diarrhea, that's why people have no energy. They want to just eat and sleep all the time because mental diarrhea is very exhausting. If you stop the mental diarrhea, there's enough energy to make this very, very intense. Now how do I stop mental diarrhea? If you have diarrhea, physical diarrhea, what is the first thing to do? First thing is stop eating, right? You eat bad food and then try to stop diarrhea, it's not going to work. So similarly, bad food for the mind is just this. You have gotten identified with things that you are not. The moment you get identified with things that you are not, mental diarrhea is inevitable. It's bad food for the mind. Now it will run endlessly, do what you want. You do any damn meditation, you say Shiva, Rama, it's not going to stop. <laughs> it's not stopped, isn't it? Because bad food is being eaten every day, you're getting identified with more and more things and you want to stop your mind, you do whatever kind of circus, it is not going to stop. If you disidentify with everything, if you understand what is you and what is not you, if you keep a little distance from that, mind will become still. If you want, you can use it, otherwise you can keep it. This much you do. Tonight before you go to bed, sit on your bed and sit down and discount everything that is not you. This house in, your, in which you are living, is this me? No. This loving parent or mother, father, wife or husband or child, they're wonderful, but is this me? No. Now these nice clothes I'm wearing, is this me? No. Now my body, I like it, but is this me? No. Now I'm having so many thoughts, is this me? No. Now I'm having wonderful emotions, is this me? No. Like this, everything that's not you, before you sleep, keep it down and go to bed. Tomorrow morning, you will wake up considerably more intense than today. Every day you do it, in a little while, if you simply sit here, things around you will reverberate. Really. Generally, somebody, when we say somebody is motivated, yes. it means they have an agenda of their own. Life has no agenda. It's for you to be a full-fledged life. A grasshopper is trying to be a full-fledged grasshopper, earthworm is trying to be a full-fledged earthworm, a bird is trying to be a full-fledged bird, a tree is trying to be a full-fledged tree. A human being should strive to become a full-fledged human being. These are all our businesses, but each one of us start creating our own agendas and doing all kinds of things. No, no, you're just a piece of life, don't take yourself too seriously. Because before you and me, countless number of people have come and gone. What you call as life is a brief sparkle. The only thing that you have to do is rise and sparkle as a full-fledged life. When something is needed around us, we will do that naturally because when you're doing wonderfully well, you will do what is needed, isn't it? When you're miserable, you will be motivated. Yes? Tell me, when you're very happy, have you looked at yourself? 
how nice and wonderful you are, you're willing to do anything for anybody, you bend backwards if necessary, yes or no? When you're little frustrated, woo, <laughs> how difficult it is. So, don't teach your children to become motivated about something. These are all nonsense that's coming from the West, all those trashy self-help books. Motivate yourself, build confidence, believe in yourself. You believed in God and destroyed so much of this world. Now you believe in yourself, what will you do? <laughs> all this trash is coming from the West. You don't have to be motivated, you just have to see how this is alive to its fullest possible level right now. If it's fully alive, it will do everything that it can do, isn't it? What it cannot do, anyway it will not do. So don't motivate your children, it's not necessary. You have to see how they're joyful and alive. In this, their body and their intelligence will work at its best. We kept account of money and things that they have. But very few people kept, kept accounts of how they are or they're progressing or regressing or what is happening. People have taken on this mode. If small things go wrong in their life, they'll find one little person down there and say it's because of him. If big things go wrong, it's because of him. The big guy up there, this guy, never in account. The little people are big people. This one, this one acts really big when he has to receive something. But when he has to give something, he really acts very small. People taken on this mode. This is because there is no clear accounting process and no clear-cut balance sheet, this is where I stand in my life. Shall we make an audit? Yes, sir. Little bit of life audit. When you were five years of age, how joyful you were. Today, how joyful you are. The balance sheet, is it profit or loss? That means it's loss. <laughs> this has happened only because there is no day-to-day -day accounting. Every day before you go to bed, if you had a balance sheet going, today, am I a little better human being or am I a little worse? Every day. If you had accounts, once a year, if there was a clear audit, <laughs> external audit, <laughs> then very quickly you would have recovered. But after twenty-five years, one day you realize, you are deep in the red, now very difficult to recover because it's gone to another place. Why this consumption of alcohol and drugs is growing the way it's growing in the world is, this is because the heavens have been collapsing. <laughs> yes, still, this generation has not fully walked away from it, still there is fear. They can't openly say, there is no goddamn hell or heaven. They're still fearful about it, but they're trying to make a little heaven for themselves here. So naturally, when they're not able to do it for themselves, out of their own intelligence, they will fall back on chemicals. So we are heading towards this rapidly. Unless we teach individual human beings how to simply sit here and be blissed out. If there was a way to intoxicate yourself without losing your judgment, without losing your awareness, without losing your intelligence, it's a great thing. Intoxication is a fantastic thing. Only problem is it takes away your judgment, it takes away your intelligence, incapacitates you. That is the problem, isn't it? Is it true that this body here is the greatest chemical factory in the universe right now, the universe that we know at least. Hmm? Only problem is you're a lousy manager. If you know how to manage this, you would be like me, always blissed out. Anybody can say what they want, anybody can do what they want, this is like this only. 
because I have not given this privilege to anybody, that somebody can make me happy, somebody can make me unhappy, somebody can make me miserable. Right now, you are a consequence of other people's opinions. Where do you plan to go like this? Anybody can ruin you. You went outside, somebody told you, Shreya, you are the most wonderful human being we have seen. You were floating on cloud whatever number and you came home, people at home told you who you really are <laughs> and the cloud will crash. No, no, it's very important that neither this way or that way, we listen to everybody because we could be doing something wrong. Hello? Any moment we could be doing something wrong, so we listen to everybody. But what they say will not determine how I am, never, ever, this you must fix. You're old enough for this, I'm not saying you're old, I said you're old enough <laughs> uh, that do you still expect the world to be fair to you? I want the world to be fair to me is a schoolgirl question. <laughs> By now you should know the world is not fair, it will not be fair to you. But if you dig deep into yourself and have a taste of life, not a taste of your thought and emotion, the taste of life that you are, then you will see life is not just fair, it's just fantastic. So, do you want fair life or fantastic life? You must decide. In this cosmos, nobody knows where it begins, where it ends. It's a in our perception at least, it's a limitless space. In this space, even if you grind all the libraries on the planet and pour it into your head, still what you know is just a speck in the universe. If you identify with that speck, you will become that speck. Because whatever you identify, you become that, isn't it? But our ignorance is boundless. If you identify with your ignorance, you will become boundless. So, what I am doing is not because of my confidence, because of clarity. So, uh, in the yogic culture, we evolved a method. We always identify with our ignorance, never with our knowledge. Because see, belief means just this, I believe in this or that means, I don't know but I'm bullying you. Why can't I say I don't know, what's the problem? I do not know is a tremendous possibility in human life. If you see I do not know, naturally the longing to know will come, seeking will come, the possibility of knowing will come. Whatever I do not know, I believe. That means you will never know, you will just go on with your own stuff. So this is why believers always need a flock. But the moment you become a seeker, you become alone. Because if you are the only person who believes something on this planet that nobody else believes, you will feel like a bloody fool. You need twenty-five people around you who believe the same thing, now you say, eh. All kinds of rubbish. <laughs> but <laughs> when once twenty-five people gather around you and all of you believe the same thing, boo! Confidence without clarity will come. Confidence without clarity is a great disaster that has unfolded upon humanity. It's mainly because of belief systems, mainly because people have become unwilling to see what I do not know, I do not know. What is the problem? See, uh, just uh, intellectually thinking, I do not know is not the point. You must know the pain of not knowing. The pain of not knowing should sear through you. Only then, your intelligence becomes awake. See, just… just look at this. This is ex extremely important. If you want to grow, 
if you want to know, it's extremely important you come to the simple understanding. What I know by experience, I know. What I do not know, I do not know. I do not know is a tremendous possibility. If you destroy I do not know, you destroy all possibilities of knowing. Everybody take a little time for this piece of life, okay? Not for your family, not for your career, not for something else, something else. Just for this piece of life, give it little time because this is the most important piece of life in your life, isn't it? So pay some attention to this, how does it happen? Why have you taken it for granted? Believe me, you're not going to be here forever. I'll bless you with a long life, but you're going to fall dead one day. <laughs> yes or no? So, do not take this for granted. If you wake up in the morning, tomorrow if you wake up in the morning... <laughs> no, this is not my <laughs> wish, but I want you to know of all the people who go to bed tonight, over a million people will not wake up tomorrow morning. And tomorrow, if you and me wake up tomorrow morning, is it not a fantastic thing? A million people did not wake up, you woke up. Is it not a great thing? Just look at the ceiling and smile, you are still awake, you're still there. And for many, many millions of people, somebody who is dear to them did not wake up. So just check those five, six people around you. They all woke up, wow, it's a fantastic day. You woke up and everybody who matters to you around you woke up. Is it not fantastic day? Yes. You don't think so. Because the problem is just this, you are living with an idea that you are immortal. When I say you're immortal, you're not actually thinking you're immortal, but you're not conscious of your mortality. If you're not conscious of your mortality, somewhere you think you're immortal, isn't it? How many moments in a day are you conscious that you're mortal? If you were conscious, would you have time to crib? Would you have time to fight with somebody? Would you have time to do some rubbish with your life? If you knew if you are conscious that you are mortal, you would do nothing other than what is absolutely needed for you and everybody around you. This one thing if you do, if you just remind yourself, you don't think this is a negative thing, death is not a negative thing, it's the only thing which has added value to your life. Just you know, one day I will die. If you're just conscious of this one thing, you will naturally become spiritual. Every day, every moment if you remind yourself, this is a brief life, I am mortal. One day I will end. Just do this for two days and see, you will become something truly fantastic within yourself, just this is all.